Hi, this is Craig Lane with Health Alchemy YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us again. Today we're going to be talking about the five Tibetans. You could call them exercises. You could call them movements where you're sinking in with a large population group that's been doing these for a long, long time. I don't know how long. And the point of this video is what are you going to get out of it? So we're going to start off with some brief explanation and we'll go right into the exercises. And as with anything in my practice, after 20 years uh, working in the field, is I'm looking at what gets the fastest results for the least amount of effort and time and money. So I have found these five Tibetan movements. Not only do I feel better afterwards, but I feel better for most of the rest of the day. And that's worthwhile, right? To take aside five, ten minutes. So the, the beauty of it is, is you're getting stagnation going. You're getting your stomach muscles toned up. You're getting every muscle in your body worked in these five movements. There's a breath that goes with it too, but as with anything, when you're writing your English paper, for example, when you write your rough draft, please don't try and get it perfect the first time. You basically, like I did when I learned the basic movements, it was, I'm going to do my best to follow the instructions, but I'm also going to have fun and just move. So it doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't Iyengar yoga. You know, you don't have to be precise. This is like get moving and have fun, okay? That's the main basis. And then when the body, mind, spirit comes together a bit more towards the end of these movements or when you lay afterwards and rest in corpse pose, shavasana, or just a simple rest, then we see like, oh, my body does seem connected more to my mind and emotions. And I do feel more present. That's one of the values of this. So the first movement is stand up and find your weight. Just like in yoga, standing mountain pose. How's my weight on my feet? Am I leaning forward on the front of the feet? Am I leaning too far back on the back of the feet? Am I on one leg to one side? And are my feet balanced from side to side? Am I too much on the inside of my foot, too much on the outside of my foot? It's important to get that down because everything above it rests upon the foundation, which are the feet. Then the movement is basically you're doing Sufi circles. So you're spinning in a circle 21 times clockwise. I like to have my left hand up and my right hand down, like the Sufi spinners do. So it's basically spinning around. And with all of these, you never do more than 21 repetitions. 21. If you want to do more, then do another set of the five Tibetans later on in the day. But don't go over 21. That's, that's the one thing I think that we need to follow, is that one recommendation seems strong. Don't go above 21. You might just overstrain yourself. Second movement is working with the core muscles, right down in here. And they're leg lifts, so we're doing leg lifts on the ground. And so you're working your psoas and your lower pelvic muscles. This isn't ab crunches. So we're not necessarily working the upper abdominals, we're working the lower abdominals. And as it goes, when you're raising the legs up, you get an inhale, you raise and you take an out breath. You inhale on the way down. And the point there is to release the tension in the muscles on the front of the body. Basically, we're working the entire front of the body, raising the legs up and you're raising your neck up at the same time. The point here is that most of us, low back, tension, pain, that's because this is overused. Notice my posture. I'm hanging over. The muscles of the back of the body have to support all this. And these muscles get contracted and weak. So then these muscles, these psoas muscles, attach to the front of the spine just like the back muscles attached to the back of the spine. So the beauty of these movements is you get that front of the spine, better circulation, and this stagnation released, and you strengthen this so that this isn't, now look, lift up, now I'm balanced. These muscles have taken over the work, these get to rest a bit. So it's important to have muscle balance front to back and side to side. Third movement, we're gonna be opening the front of the body up. So we just crunched it down. So it's basically hands on the low back, an inhale, and then an exhale down. And we'll be on our knees on that, or you could be standing on your feet. And the point of that one is just to open up and get blood flow in the areas that were just contracted. Number four. I call this a crab push-up. <laughs> so it's a push-up where you're back of your body is on the ground and the front of your body is facing up and you're raising your pelvis in the air. Again, I like the inhale down and exhale up. 
You're strengthening now the back of the shoulders, back of the body, glutes, hamstrings, as you're raising and going down. And I like that movement because it really gives me the visuals. We worked the abs in the front of the body, then we opened it up. We spun in a circle and got our balancing centers more conscious. Now we've strengthened the back of the body with this, what I call crab push-up. <laughs> crab push-up posture. And again, let's not be a hero when we start this. 21's maximum. If you can only do three or four, don't push it. It's better to have your rough draft added to later than don't do what I did, give myself an inguinal hernia 15 years ago from overly straining too much in yoga. Fifth movement is basically a variation of upward and downward dog. So it's a, it's a push-up, but the pelvis is the only part moving. So you're, we're kind of going up and down and we're strengthening the front of the shoulders and the front of the body because you're in plank pose, downward and upward facing dog. And again, I like the watch the breath. So I exhale going down and inhale going up. But if you want to play with the breath, you know, you can try different variations do the opposite. Maybe inhale going down and exhale up. And so the point of the upward and downward dog is, again, my back always pops during the 21 movements. So going up and down and up and down. I try and extend all the way up and extend all the way down. So it's flexion and extension. And in that process, the spine starts to get a little space. And in my mid-back, particularly T6, it just pops. At some point during the 21 movements, it'll go And then I notice I just feel a lot better, just like a chiropractic adjustment. So the fifth movement, after I do my 21, I tend to rest for a moment. And remember, how we end something is as important as how we start it. We might start off with an intention. We go into our intention during the movements, and then we release and let go what we need to let go of at the end. It's important that we honor that. And then the value of these movements, if you want to take it to a, the next level, Patanjali, thousands of years ago, made the Yoga Sutras. And we want to be clear about why we're doing this. Yoga and breath work and various exercises and self-care were meant for the meditator to get the mind calm and the body in line with the mind so that the meditations are deeper and we're able to go deeper into our inner world. That's one of the points of this in the meditative tradition. So if you do your five Tibetans, for God's sake, spend three or five minutes on the ground afterwards. The minimum rest period, Shavasana, corpse pose, is about three to five minutes. And that's your goal. And with that being said, that's the value of Health Alchemy's YouTube channel. We're here to give you direct experience. We're here to give you an experience you cannot deny. And I hope you watch many more of our YouTubes here on the Health Alchemy YouTube channel. It's Craig Lane, signing off.